Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of the Dialogue Project. We have with us Urja Kulkarni, who is pursuing MS in Electrical Engineering at Columbia University. She is here to discuss how she scored a 332 in GRE. So, welcome Urja. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, let's st- get started with the questions. Uh, over to you, Akash. Uh, thank you, Aditya, and uh, thank you, Urja, for joining us today. uh so let's start with uh, your plan of action and, and everything for gre so the first question from our side is uh, what uh, like what exactly is the exam pattern uh, for the gre and the uh, kind of sections they have and the marking scheme okay so the gre has three types of questions the first part is the analytical writing so analytical writing has two essays which are 30 minutes each and then it is followed by quantitative reasoning and verbal reasoning so you have two quantitative reasoning sections and two verbal reasoning sections each quant section is of 35 minutes and consists of 20 questions and each verbal section is of 30 minutes and also consists of 20 questions however there is one more section called the experimental section which could be either verbal or quants you do not know that in advance so which is the fifth section and all of these five sections could be in any order so you don't know it could be quants verbal quants verbal quants or it could be in any order so you don't know that and that's the pattern so the exam lasts for about 4 hours including the experimental section so this a section which you mentioned uh, right now is not scored right no it is not scored the experimental section is not scored but like i said you do not know which is your experiment which is your experimental section so you should give each section with equal importance and the gre is a section adaptive exam which means that depending on your performance in the first quant and the first verbal section the difficulty of the sections after that is decided so the first section is always of average difficulty and depending on how you score in in that section the section after that would be worthy of higher difficulty or lower difficulty okay okay understood and uh, so when did you take the gre and how long uh, before taking the exam did you actually start uh, kind of preparing for it okay so i took my gre in august 2020 and i started preparing for it uh, around mid march 2020 yeah mid march so i think i prepared for about 5 months okay and, and uh, did you also enroll for any coaching classes you know i went to inspire us uh, so a lot of students from my college went to that class so i also enrolled for that it was in anderi near my college so i used to go to the classes after my classes at college okay understood so what were the level of questions in the coaching class as compared to that in the exam Uh, so the level of questions was uh, very similar since the GRE is a, a very popular exam. So you'll find a lot of questions available online and in classes. So all all of the questions are uh, very similar to the ones that ones that appear in the actual exam. Okay. So how many mocks did you give, and like what was the performance in them as compared to the actual exam? Okay, so I gave ah uh, thirteen mocks, and I started giving my mocks in June. So I think I gave mocks for two months. So around I used to give two mocks every week, somewhere about that. Sometimes one once per week or twice per week. And my performance in the mocks was ah uh, it was okay. So I my average score was three twenty seven for all of my mock tests. but so i never really crossed 313 in any of my mocks so my score in my actual gre was my all time high 332 but uh, the mocks that i gave were from different uh, different uh, vendors if you will so i gave manhattan i gave princeton then i gave the power prep so every every vendor had different difficulty levels so manhattan was a really tough mock so i gave i i bought the six mock tests kid from manhattan and I, i felt that the quant section of manhattan was tougher than the actual exam but uh, princeton was okay kaplan was okay and the power prep that is the official gre mock test so the gre gives you two official mock tests to prepare for and uh, both of them actually match the actual exam in the most accurate way possible especially for the verbal section and uh, the but the but i felt that the quants on the power prep was a little easier than the quant section of my actual exam okay that's what good to know 
Okay. So I think the book that I did uh book that I used the most was the Manhattan 5 pounds GRE prep book. I think that's a pretty standard book everyone does that. So I so how I started was I started with the font section of that book first and uh, I tried doing the verbal section but I realized that in GRE verbal is largely based on vocabulary and I did not have that strong of a vocabulary so I thought that first I should try and learn as many words as possible and then i, I would get into solving because otherwise it wouldn't make sense uh, i wouldn't I, i just wouldn't know the words enough to actually try and answer the questions so right. i started doing points and i would prepare i would learn uh, 20 words every day okay. and after i acquired a certain number of uh, after i learned a certain number of words then i started solving the verbal section so i finished points and then i finished all the words and then i did verbal for 5 pounds and after that i did uh, kaplan question banks which are available online so i did that and i think what is important is that while solving all of these topics you you often realize that uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses and i realized that for me it was reading comprehension i used to struggle a lot in reading comprehension so then i went like i said i went ahead and did kaplan question banks and i did a lot of reading comprehension through that to improve my rc skills so it 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 really depends from depends on you and your plus and minuses to actually decide and go ahead and do extra prep for the areas that you are weaker in okay true and Got i had it. one question about word lists actually so which word list did you uh, refer to like okay so for for the word list i there's a there's a magush app for vocab for gre so i started with that and i think it has three levels basic uh, intermediate and advanced so i did all the uh, oh it's common basic and advanced so i did all the common and basic words i did not do the advanced words because i heard that a lot of advanced words are not asked in the exam so i did all the common and basic words and then i went and did uh, so manhattan also has this vocab list at the end of the book so i did all of those words as well and i think yeah i think that was pretty much it and then the words that i found while doing all the questions the rcs and all the uh, questions in verbal section i used to just note down all of those words and i think this is really important like when even when you do all the magush words or the manhattan words you often come come across words that you have never seen before so it's important to write those down in a book and more importantly it's important to also write an example of the usage of that word to remember it better because mm. i i realize that you you tend to remember it better when you can actually use that word in a sentence so it's really important to actually try and think of how you can use that word in a situation that you are familiar with and that really helps in grasping the meaning uh, quickly mm-hmm. got it got it uh moving on along the same lines uh, what was your uh, like what was your study plan for the five word months that you prepared for the gre Okay okay so like i said i started with uh, doing the magush word list and manhattan points and then i moved on to manhattan oral and after that i did whatever i felt that i was weak in which was mostly the oral section and uh, then in june i really started with the mock tests and uh, with the mock test i used to do like two mock tests every week and i i was also in college at that time so i had classes and projects of college so i couldn't really uh, uh continuously prepare for gre as much as i wanted to but i think being in lockdown helped with that because i was at home all the time so i saved time i saved the commute time to and for college and uh after the mocks i think 
I think, yeah, I think just it's important to continuously revise all the words. So even when you learn new words, so like I said, I used to try and do 20 new words every day. But then every Sunday, I used to sit and revise all of the new words that I had learned throughout the week. And then, so that was that week. And then once in a month, I would revise all the words that I'd done that month. And it's really important to continuously keep revi revising the words because you tend to forget the words. Since, since there are, I, I think there are like a thousand words in GRE, I don't remember, maybe thousand if not more. So it's a lot of words to learn in, in, the, in a short amount of time. So it's really important to keep revising the words. And as for points, I would say you, you go over all the problems that you uh, find difficult or that, that you tend to do mistakes in. So I think for GRE, quants is not that difficult if you have done engineering, especially if you have done engineering maths. So it's not difficult concept wise, but GRE quants tend to be tricky at times. So it's really important to be attentive and be careful and not make silly mistakes. So it's important to list down uh, the areas that you usually end up tricking over. So yeah, I think that's it. Got it. Perfect. Uh, then uh, could you uh, let us in on some of your exam taking tips and strategies? Okay. So I think strategy, I think strategy would be one thing that I felt I should have done was uh, I should have read more. So GRE verbal GRE verbals, all of the texts in the reading comprehensions are academic texts in GRE because their intention is to prepare you for graduate school. So it's expected that you are able to read and comprehend texts from actual from an from an actual academic setting. And that that takes a lot of effort. Like what what I realized was I was I used to lose focus while uh, reading some of the bigger reading comprehensions so if if I had a habit if I had a reading habit then that would have made me much more equipped to deal with the reading comprehension and one more thing is so what is the uh, what what the dif difficult part about it was sitting at one place for four hours so I don't think we are just used to sitting at one place for four hours giving a four hour long exam continuously is really mentally taxing and while doing all the mocks so like I mentioned before we had the analytical writing section and I would just skip over that section I would think okay I'll just do it later so I would just skip over that and I would jump right into the quants and the verbal part and then that would make that exam just three hours and that was okay but in the in the actual exam it's four hours so to stay focused till the end is really difficult and like I said in the actual exam there's an experimental section and you don't know which section it is so you can't afford to lose focus by like the fourth section and not be attentive for the last section right so I think it's important not to skip over any section while giving the mocks and one more thing is, uh, so the analytical writing section, that is that is one more thing that I regret. So I scored a four out of six in the AWA section. And Princeton has mock tests, which actually grade your AWA essays. So they have this auto grading software. So you write the essay and they, I think they'll grade it in, in a few hours. And it's really good, like it's decent. It's good enough to prepare you. And I, I because I skipped over most of, the, most of the essays, I couldn't really prepare that well. But I would say make the most of those free mock tests and the essay grading part because no other uh, test provider has a auto grader for analytical writing. So you should make the most of the Princeton uh, auto grader. It's also Got completely it. free, right? Uh, this yeah, it's all free. It's all it's free. You have four mock tests and it's free. I think ETS also uh, has a service where you pay around twenty dollars to get your uh, essays graded for the AWA section. Okay, okay, mm. maybe I think I've heard about it, but I'm not sure. I I didn't use it. So also one more thing there's a youtube channel called greg matt and uh he's really good with awa i did not know this at the time of my preparation i found out about this after but he's really good and i i would recommend that you watch those videos because he actually teaches you how to structure and write that essay and once you know how to do that it's just easy it's like it's like math you know the structures you just have to fill in fill in the bits depending on what the problem statement is I would recommend that channel as well, not just for AWA, even for other other GRE prep things. Got it. Uh, Whereas we come to our last question, 
uh, what would you suggest aspirants do one day before the GRE exam? Okay, I think that's a good question. Um, I think one day before the exam, I would just suggest everyone to revise all the words and go over all the places in quants where you usually make a mistake. And I think that's it. It's really important to not do a mock test one day before because doing a four hour mock test really exhausts you and you do not want to be exhausted one day before the exam. You have to be fresh and you have to sleep early and get good sleep. Getting good sleep is is really important. I understand that people feel nervous and they are, might be unable to sleep, but it's just really important to try and get a good sleep and not do a mock test because I think a lot of people feel that you should do a mock test just before the exam that you are perfectly prepared, but I don't know. I disagree. I feel like if you do a mock test one day before the exam, you'll be too exhausted to do one more full length exam the day after. So yeah, keep have a light day if possible. Thank you, Urja, for enlightening uh, the viewers and us with the ins and outs of GRE, your uh, tactics and uh, strategies on how you took the GRE exam. Um, thank you for your time. And all thank the best so for, your... for having me. I really hope whatever I said was helpful. And if someone could have a better score, I would be really happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Urja. It will assuredly be helpful to our aspirants. Hey folks, thank you for watching our video. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also guys, please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video.